Chciałem na końcu teatru. Good morning, and may I welcome you via the internet into this special ceremony today for Jane Weller. Jane was a warm, caring and straight-talking lady who always looked after and out for others, be that human or animal. She was happy in who she was and the life that she led, a bright, engaging and independent person who had a real impact on others. So first, a poem especially chosen by her sister, Anne. Happy the Woman, adapted by John Dryden. Happy the woman, and happy she alone. She who can call today her own. She who secure within can say, Tomorrow do thy worst, for I have lived today. Be fair or foul, or rain or shine, the joys I have possessed in spite of fate are mine. Not heaven itself upon the past has power, but what has been, has been, and I have had my hour. Born on the 17th of November, 1936, Jane was the middle child for Lillian and Stanley. Her childhood was spent moving around quite a lot alongside her siblings, elder sister Anne and younger brother Sam. Caring and kindness were two characteristics that were innate to the very centre of Jane's being. So it was possibly no major surprise that her calling in life was to become a nurse. Leaving school at 17, she headed to Heatherwood Orthopaedic Hospital in Ascot, where she started her training. From Heatherwood, she progressed to Charing Cross Hospital and then to Westminster Children's Hospital, having completed a six months premature baby course at Hull Maternity Hospital. A further stint at Queen Charing Cross as a postgrad on the children's ward, she went to Queen Mary's Hospital, Roehampton, where she spent nine years of her career. It was from her time at Queen Mary's that in 1971, she then went to Athens to Greece initially to work at Athens Children's Hospital, but soon she became a governess for the Komnenos, Komnenos family, where she spent over 13 very, very happy years looking after and loving the children, Marina, Ari and Vicky. Upon returning to the UK in 1984, Jane continued her caring career, this time working with the education sector spending time as a deputy sister at Ardingley College for Boys and then as a sister at Burke Hampstead School for Girls. Jane had a truly remarkable and fulfilling career, working across the care sector and without doubt making a real difference to so many people. It took her around the UK and of course Greece, which was a real highlight of Jane's life. Jane dedicated her life to others, both within her career and at home. She maintained a close relationship with her siblings and was devastated to lose her brother at too young an age in 1983. She stayed close to her sister Anne and husband Derek and she developed a close bond with niece Jane and nephew Johnny later in life loving to spend time with their children, Sam, Frankie and Vinnie. I have some words here from Marina, the youngest daughter of the Komnenos family. I've tried to define what Jane was to me, like a mother, 
a second mother, the person who held me in her arms before even my mother. None of them fits. She wasn't like anyone, nor was she second to anyone. She was Janie Mui, strong-willed and passionate, who showered me with her love and affection, her laughter and her chatter, her principles and convictions, and made me who I am today. And she was most generous with her love, pouring it into the kids in her care with a mix of tenderness and principles. Talking with her nephew John and the sister at the care home to which she moved after losing her independence in the last six months of her life, Jane said that for every child she looked after, she felt what happened to them as deeply as if they were her own. Jane enjoyed her life in Romsey and made many, many good friends when she returned after her professional career. As always, she would do whatever she could to help them when they needed him and came to rely on them to support her, these wonderful people, in her later years. A good friend, Tinke Jensen, said, Honestly, someone so straightforward, so clear in her opinions, it felt like a breath of fresh air. Without saying, she expected the same approach from others. Jane loved animals and gardening, and she had two lovely little King Charles Spaniels, Jamie and Gypsy, that she doted on, and enjoyed the Hampshire countryside with them. Her niece, Jane, said, her garden was her very little patch of paradise that she planted and nurtured continuously. She didn't like to sit down for very long in it, as there was always something to be tidied or admired. Her dedication to her profession and others did not stop when she passed, donating her body to medical science at her old place of work, Charing Cross Hospital. Now, it is not how we enter this world or how we leave that count. It's the bit in between, and it's the many, many years of happy memories that Jane would want you to remember her by. It is with such sadness we have had to say goodbye to you, but we thank you so much for every little gift you have ever contributed to this life and to the lives of so many others. We thank you for your understanding, unwavering support and your dedication to those you loved and to your profession. We thank you for your presence, your perseverance, your determination to be the best you could be. We thank you for your humour, your wonderful smile and all those times you made us laugh. But most of all, we thank you for your love and for your friendship, for the time and effort you put into our lives, for your thoughts and deeds and for your kind and humble heart. We thank you for everything you were and all that you gave. And may you now forever rest in peace with the certain knowledge that you are, were, are, and will always be dearly loved and terribly missed. Farewell, Jane. Say